What's going on everyone? In this video I'm going to show you how to set up an essentially production ready vault cluster in AWS with about two commands and about seven minutes of sort of coffee drinking setup time after you hit enter. This video uses the official HashiCorp modules that my team at Hashi just wrote and released. Uh, it's an amazing module, or really set of modules, which I've wrapped in a warm, comfy blanket of Terraform so that you can start from scratch and have a test environment up in just a few minutes, really with just a few commands, regardless of whether you want to use the free open source version of Vault or test out the paid enterprise version. So all of this is actually fairly easy to do, but I also want to spend some time explaining <laughs> what you're actually running. So it's a video that comes in several parts. First, I'll explain what Vault is. Second, I'll walk you through what you have to actually do and type to create the infrastructure. That part's really simple. Third, I give you a quick tour of my wrapper modules. It's the stuff that I wrote, which lets you choose between the enterprise and open source modules that my team wrote. It also takes care of um, setting up a VPC and certificates for your cluster so that it's actually got valid certs. Fourth and finally, I'll show you how the underlying modules that my team wrote are actually structured, sort of give you a little bit of a tour uh, of the Terraform code so that you can see some of the interesting parts there. Don't worry, I've got timestamps in the description, so you should be able to skip around easily with those um, or just on the video playhead. Okay, a very quick intro to Vault because I'm just assuming that most of you already know what it is, but Vault is amazing. It's a HashiCorp tool that's kind of becoming the de facto standard for secret storage and management everywhere in all kinds of organizations. It can be a single secure place for your infrastructure and app secrets to live, which is how a lot of us developers kind of interact with it. And it can do a million other cool things like integrating with cloud service authentication, acting as certificate authority for your company, um, automatically rotating your Postgres passwords every week without you noticing or having to change any application configs. It does a ton of stuff. So check out the official site, which I am scrolling if you're curious and you really don't even know what we're setting up. But I'm going to assume that at this point you have done that. So what is this? Like, what is what are we doing here? This is a demo of an open source vault module, specifically an implementation that conforms to the recommendations in our new vault reference architecture, which I am proud to say my team at HashiCorp worked on. The idea is to get you started with a production grade setup in about 10 minutes. So this is something you can set up and play with very, very quickly. I really do recommend you check out the vault reference architecture to kind of see how this is structured, what the architecture is, and all the recommendations we have for actually operationalizing this, right? Because it's, it's more than just having a cluster, it's running a cluster is then another kind of thing. So let's start creating some infrastructure. I'm just gonna walk through the readme um, that you'll find in the repo for the wrapper module that I wrote, linked in the description below. The first thing we gotta do is run a Terraform init. It's going to pull down all of our modules, the provider that we're using, all the prerequisites for actually running Terraform on our code base here. So it should be fairly obvious if you're used to building infrastructure in Amazon, but this part, like all of what you're going to see requires that you have an Amazon account and have exported credentials into your shell so that you can actually talk to Amazon and provision infrastructure using their API. Now what we need to do is uh, create the VPC first because everything depends on it. So we're going to use the dash dash target, which will basically bring us up to a certain resource in the, in the Terraform resource graph. And then after that's done, we'll have a VPC and we'll be able to create the rest. There's some variables here. Um, I've picked the region US West 2, but that's kind of all you need to worry about. If you want it somewhere else, make sure that uh, you have the right AZs in there pretty much leave those as the default, unless you're doing this in production and you've got your own ideas about that. Okay, we have a VPC created and it's warning us because we use dash dash target that we've only created a partial you know, amount of the Terraform graph up to a certain resource. So now we can just go ahead and plan and apply the rest. All of our prereqs are there 
and a regular plan and apply will work because now the VPC that it's depending on it has been created. We're going to start applying this. So this is the part that starts to cost money, folks. So there's a whole bunch of stuff happening here from the top. Um, our ACM certs are being created. The load balancers are being created. Uh, I guess it's only one load balancer. The actual security groups, launch configs, auto scaling groups that your vault instances are gonna be under. And as that creation process is finishing up, you can start logging into your AWS console to kind of look at the resources that are being created. When you log in, make sure you're in the right region. I had to switch because I'm in US West 2. And I can see my instances there. That's kind of what I care about the most. So now we're gonna to connect to any one of our vault instances to initialize the cluster. Click connect, use the service manager. And because these are in a private subnet, you can't like connect to them directly. They don't have a public IP. Become root. And a vault status, you can see that we're not initialized. And if we say vault operator init, that bootstraps the entire cluster for us, spits out our first uh, emergency keys, our first root token. And then if we run another status, you can see that uh, it's initialized now. So now we're gonna export that, that first vault root token. You would obviously wanna copy paste all this stuff to like <laughs> your password manager, your, your, however you're storing stuff for your ops team. Um, you export that first root token and now you can run uh, regular vault commands that require the root token. Like a raft list peers, you can see who's a leader, that the others are followers. This is like a healthy looking cluster. One of the first things you'll probably want to do is tweak this. I'm not saying these are the settings you necessarily want. These are obviously for a kind of test cluster, um, but like the dead server cleanup uh, is something you might want uh, to adjust the, the time on. But right here, it's just an example of setting that config and the, the corresponding get config command so that you can see that all of that stuff has been successfully updated in the cluster. You're done. Congratulations. So let's look at the underlying modules. There's kind of two layers of this. First is my wrapper module. Now you're familiar with this. This is what we use. This is what we ran Terraform against. Here's the VARS file that I explained, how we're picking the region and making sure that our AZs are a valid list for that region. And Let's dig into main.tf. So this is really where all the action is happening. And you can see that I call multiple modules, one to create the VPC, which is one of the example modules that my team at HashiCorp wrote just to help people bootstrap quickly and test this stuff quickly. The second is the AWS Secrets Manager and ACM cert example module, which just allows you to bootstrap Vault with valid certs without needing to like figure out your PKI infrastructure right off the bat just to test this. The idea is you'll probably integrate this in production with stuff you already have, like you're gonna have a VPC, a production VPC already that you want this in, and you'll probably have your own PKI and certificate management like infrastructure set up. But you see that this uh, kind of quick start example includes these example modules and I am wrapping both of them in this module that I'm creating. Underneath all of that is the vault starter module here. And you can see that is the source is our official vault starter module for AWS, um, giving a version tag here. And one thing you might notice is that I have made my wrapper module compatible with both the enterprise module and the open source vault 
module. Now by default I'm shipping this as the open source version, but all you got to do is uncomment that top chunk and comment the bottom chunk before you know doing a Terraform init and running this code base to switch between enterprise and open source. The enterprise also requires the HC license file. So you need a Vault Enterprise license to do um, that. I have also written out the actual like step-by-step -step process for switching my wrapper module between um, open source and enterprise or specifically switching to enterprise. You'll see that I don't pass these in, but there's some really nice features like you can pass in your own user supplied AMI ID, I am role names that you want your vault. Um, if you've already got a vault role for some reason, um, if you have custom user data that you use to configure your instances, you can also supply that. So this is meant to integrate with stuff fairly easily. If we look at the underlying module, I just want to show you one of the files where really a lot of the work is being done. This is a user data file. It's essentially a long bash script and you can see, okay, like where is vault actually getting its config? Well, it's being written in here based on a bunch of other stuff that happens in the config. This is essentially the vault config file that is read by all these servers. So this is what the cluster is using for config. You can see these are the certs that we magically create. Uh, you don't even have to worry about it. All you got to do is run Terraform apply. Um, it's using the raft storage backend. It has a KMS auto unseal configured which is, again, amazing. Uh, so it's doing a lot of heavy lifting for you, this underlying module, in both configuring the cluster, configuring the instances, um, and kind of having a lot of these pro-level features available to you. I just want to make a quick note on style, specifically the style that this Terraform module is written in. This is the underlying Terraform module still, the Vault and Starter module. And you can see that it's split into modules, like submodules, and a main.tf file. And all the main.tf file does is call the underlying modules. And each of those modules simply takes care of one kind of concern that this module overall has, like networking, KMS, object storage for the license, user data to actually configure the instances, the instances themselves, load balancing. I don't know if I already said load balancing, but load balancing again. And that lets you structure this, you know, the, the submodules here, the modules that make up this module in a really nice way. And each of them has a nice readme markdown file. And then the main.tf file for each module takes care of the actual, you know, like rubber meets the road, uh, practical concerns that this thing has to do. But none of that has to leak out necessarily. So what I mean by that is it's like, sure, you have the port config and all this, this like specific stuff to what this module is doing in main TF, but then the nice thing about Terraform modules and the way they're supposed to be used is that none of that should really leak out. So the documentation for each of these kind of modules, you can treat it almost like the module is a function and the documentation just shows you the parameters that that function takes that you, you know that you need to pass in as arguments in this case private subnet tags and the vpc id so think of these more as functions i like that style i like that style of writing and documenting terraform modules i think it's clean and i think it um, kind of sets the right context of like this is just like a program these modules are just like reusable functions and they should be written that way. Don't let all this junk leak out. Always remember, when you are playing around with this stuff, obviously if you're not gonna persist this infrastructure uh, for any length of time, if you're just playing around and testing, then you really wanna Terraform destroy your infrastructure so that you're not actually spending money. Yes, note to reader, again, you are spending real money when you're doing this, okay? All right, everybody, thank you so much for watching, and I hope that was useful and educational. My hope is that this is gonna make getting started with Vault, just starting to test it, starting to use it in a practical way, much easier than it has been, and I would just like to thank my team at HashiCorp for writing the underlying module that I've used here, um, which is just, I think, the easiest way to get started with Vault. Please feel free to leave comments below. I'm definitely interested in your experiences 
And uh, yeah, have fun, everybody. See you in the next one. Peace.